in Carter's way case today. The topic of our presentation is motorcycle crash train in Florida. We are going to review the train of motorcycle crashes in Florida as well as a recent observational survey of motorcyclists. This way case is sponsored by the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida. My name is my name is Dr. Lin, program director of ITS traffic operation and safety at Carter. I will facilitate today's presentation. Our senior research associate, Dr. Chen Yang Li, will be our, our presenter. This webcast is being recorded. If you miss any part of the presentation, you will be able to download the full length presentation from our Carter web website early next week. Our Carter website address is www.cutr.usf.edu. First, let me provide you with a quick overview of the Center for Urban Transportation Research, commonly referred to as Carter. Carter was established in 1988 by the Florida legislature and the, the Florida Board of Regents. For our Carter research program, at any given time, there are more than 100 active research projects at Carter. We conduct more than a million dollar research annually. There are 45 full-time researchers and more than 20 graduate assistants in our Carter research programs. Carter houses two national center institu institutes, the National Center for Transit Research and the National Bus Rapid Transit Institute. There are seven major research programs at Carter, as shown in this slide. We focus on research, education, training, and technical assistance. Next, let me also give you a quick background of this presentation. There is growing concern regarding the rapid increase of motorcycle rider fatality in U.S., while national rate for motor vehicle crash fatality have been declining over the last 10 years. However, motorcycle rider fatality continued their 10-year increase, reaching 5,290 in 2008. Florida has been above the national average in the proportion of motorcyclists killed in traffic crashes compared to all traffic fatalities. In year 2000, Florida became one of six states that repealed motorcycle helmet use law. After repeal, a person over 21 years of age is allowed to operate or ride upon a motorcycle without wearing a helmet. If he or she carried uh, at least $10,000 in medical insurance to cover injury costs as a result of a crash. To reduce increasing motorcycle fatality and injury in Florida, in 2008, Florida legislature passed a mandatory training law starting July 1st, 2008. New motorcyclists must take and pass a basic rider course through the Florida Rider Training Program before they can have the motorcycle endorsement added to their licenses. In addition, the Florida Motorcycle Safety Coalition was established. The coalition assists the Florida Motorcycle Safety Program with implementing the goals and strategies of Motorcycle Strategic Safety Plan. The coalition works closely with the safety partners around the state to reduce fatality and serious injury to motorcycle riders and their presenters. 
and it is our honor that Carter provide full administrative and technical support to the Florida Motorcycle Safety Coalitions. Before I introduce our presenters, uh, we would like to ask you a few poll questions. So the question number one is, how many other people are viewing today? Uh, wake case with you. Uh, just take a couple of seconds and you can click the poll choice on your left. Okay, now we close the poll, and uh, as you can see that, uh, we got uh, many uh, of you uh, uh, viewing by yourself, and uh, some, some of them will view uh, with uh, other uh, co-workers, maybe, and I think it's good. Uh, the next question is, where are you uh, located? Okay, uh, that's a, a close support, and as you can see that, uh, most of them are, are in the United States or in Florida, and uh, there's uh, uh, one in the North uh, East region and one in the West region. Okay, then we go to the, the next poll question. Which type of organization do you represent? Okay, uh, yeah, most of uh, our uh, viewers today uh, is from local governments, state DOT and federal government, and we also have uh, some from university and consultant uh, private business. Okay, then let's go to the next poll question. Are you a motorcycle rider? Okay, uh, so 84% of you are not a motorcycle riders, but uh, we all concern about the motorcycle safety, and I think uh, we got two uh, motorcycle riders. Okay. Uh, next, I would like to uh, introduce our, our presenter. Our presenter today is Dr. Chen Yang Li, and Dr. Li is a senior research associate with expertise on motorcycle safety research transportation system modeling, incident management, transportation planning, traffic simulation, and ITS technology evaluation. Dr. Lee received his PhD in civil engineering from the University of Wisconsin Medicine in 2004. He is a professional transportation planner certified by ITE. He has published and presented numerous papers in the national and international conferences. And Dr. Lee is also very active in the TRB committees. And as uh, I mentioned earlier today, Dr. Lee is going to present the motorcycle crash train in Florida. His presentation will also include a recent observ observational survey of motorcycle riders in Florida. Let's welcome Dr. Lee. Okay, thanks, Dr. Lin. Welcome to Cutter Webcast again. Today, I would like to share the findings from our past and ongoing project regarding the motorcycle crash trend in Florida. And this presentation is developed based on the findings from several research projects that are funded by Florida Department of Transportation. Motorcycle riding has become a more popular in recent years, and appearing to the new group of people consisting of older and more affluent riders, the sales of all types of the two-wheeled motorcycles totaled over 1 million in uh, 2008. 
and according to an article, riding motorcycle is the number one hobby for retired baby boomer. In the past 10 years, there are two important milestones for the motorcycle riding in Florida. First, in year 2000, as Dr. Lee mentioned, the state of Florida um, changed the uh, hammer law for the motorcycle list. So now, the motorcycle list over 21 years or older can ride um, without wearing helmet if they can carry if they carry at least 10,000 in medical insurance to cover up the injury cost as a result of the crash. And year 2008, uh, Florida amended um, the motorcycle law again, and now the uh, motorcycle training and safety. The, anybody is looking for the motorcycle endorsement in Florida, and they have to go through the motorcycle training or safety course. And as you can see from the, this figure, that the motorcycle regist registration in Florida and the U.S. for past 20 years um, are increased, <coughs> has been increased a lot. And these numbers are indexed to the 1991 data. And as you can see, the number of motorcycle registration in Florida has increased, has been increased to nearly 3.5 times compared to the number of registration in 19, uh, 1991. The national trend increased the motorcycle registration over the same period about twice. So as you can see, there is a tr uh, the, almost a flat trend up to the 2000, and there is a uh, spike has was started from the year 2000, and then it's compared to the um, year 2000 and the, compared to the year 1991 and. 2008 is almost 3.5 times different. The sharp increase in Florida motorcycle registration start in the year 2000, which coins, um, which is the same year for the helmet law change. And the state of the Florida, <coughs> this graph shows the percent of the motorcycle crashes to all vehicle crashes. The state of Florida shows a higher percentage of motorcycle crashes in all vehicle crashes compared to the national average. And this can be explained by the fact that you can ride 12 months in Florida and the state also appeals to the many motorcycle tourists around the nations. As you can see from the figure, it has been twice of the national average in terms of the motorcycle crash uh, in Florida the, if you compare the portion to the motorcycle crash to the all vehicle crashes, but and there was no dramatic changes as the motorcycle regi registration increased after year 2000, it, rather as a reasonably stable trend. However, if you look at the um, fatal motorcycle crash in Florida, the fatal motorcycle crash in Florida has been increased significantly in past 10 years compared to the national average. And you can see the difference, um, the, the trend has been almost the same between the, the national average and Florida up to the uh, 1999. And we start to see the difference from year 2000 and the Florida trend <coughs> And after the 2000, there has been an increasing gap between the two trends, this one and this one. So in 2008, the, per, the proportion of the motorcycle fatality compared to all traffic fatality reached an all-time high of 17.8% in Florida, compared to the national all-time high of 14.2%. And also, if you look at the percent percentage of fatal motorcycle crashes to all motorcycle crashes. And again, the trend remained almost similar between the U.S. and Florida up to the 1999. <clears throat> and we start to see the difference from year 2000. And it can be seen the, um, the Florida motorcycle fatality as a fraction of the total motorcycle, fra uh, motorcycle crashes is almost uh, <clears throat> six, um, who went to the 6.1% in the year 2006. So 2001, in, in terms of the summary, 2001, we had the 2,706 motorcycle fatalities, and we have 
532 uh, motorcycle fatalities in year 2008. Okay, this is um, simple fact figures for the motorcycle crash in Florida for year 2008. And according to the data and issues, the 32% of the motorcycle fatalities relate to the um, traumatic brain injuries. And then also you can see the medical hospital charge for the motorcyclist admitted to uh, Freud Hospital for the treatment of traffic crash injuries is almost uh, $50,000. So let's have a um, quick question. Okay, what do you think are the uh, total hospital charges that incurred in the Florida for the uh, initial treatment of motorcyclists injured in traffic crash in Florida? Okay, I think um, there are different kind of opinion regarding the, these numbers. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and check the, uh, our answers. Okay, total hospital charges for the initial treatment of the motorcyclists injured in traffic crash in the 2008 is almost 400 million in Florida. So this is a um, huge amount of the cost that uh, in, the was incurred by the motorcycle crashes. Okay, um, as a part of the, our study also, we conducted observational survey to uh, understand whether there is any change or variation due to the, um, the hammer law uh, in 2008, in the year 2000. Okay, so we selected about 15 counties over the state, and we do the uh, sampling from each county based on the, their crash data. So this sampled county has uh, two types. One is a double sampled, and then the other one is a single sampled. The double sampled county, we checked the 54 intersections and one hour of observation. And the single sampled county, we had uh, um, 27 intersections with one hour of observation. And as you can see under this column, it shows the uh, total number of observation. And then for example, in the Miami-Dade County, we went to the um, 54 intersections, and we watched it for the one hours, and the total number of observation is 475. Our observation include uh, type of the helmet and also the use of the protective gears. And there are different type of helmets, like open face and motocross and full face. And also there's a novelty helmet. Novelty helmet is, is not the US, it doesn't meet the, uh, U, the safety standard by, by the US DOT. And also there are different type of personal protection equipment is a pants and cross toe shoes and eye protection and gloves and jackets. And also there are different type of motorcycles and you can see the cruisers, custom made bike and sports bike and standard bike and touring bike and trike bike and also there is a on off road bike and scooters. So basically our observer um, is standing, uh, was standing on the side of the intersection and watching the motorcycle uh, coming in, and then we are checking what type of motorcycle and what type of motor, whether they wear the helmet or not. If they wear the helmet, then what type of the helmet, and then also whether they use the um, personal protection gear or not. This is the summary that shows the helmet use in Florida that was observed in, uh, based on the 2000 to, um, 2010 survey. And as you, um, Keller has been conducting the, this uh, survey um, since 1993. And as you can see, um, this is the number prior to the um, new rule change. And then this is the number after the rule change. And as you can see, this 40.2% uh, 40 per, 40 40 was the novelty helmet that was used to um, 
just to uh, avoid the um, the citation from the role in first month, but now you, they don't have to um, do that. So actually, the novelty helmet has been decreased and almost gone by now. And also, you can note, uh, you can see that the use of the helmet is um, actually dropped right after the role change. But however, over the last 10 years, it has been increased a little bit. In terms of the protection, personal protective gears, and there, there, um, <clears throat> we didn't see the um, significant difference between the surveys, and about um, 93 to um, 95 and 90 percent of eye protection. And by the way, the um, the wearing the eye protection is required by the law in Florida. And of course, due to the hot weather in Florida, wearing the jacket is not that popular by the riders. So this figure shows the summary of the uh, observational motorcycle survey in Florida. And as you can see, the, in terms of bike tie combination between the survey, there was no significant change. About 50% of the bike that we observe on the street is a cruiser type and about 18.5% is a um, sports bike. And sports bike was the one, <clears throat> usually the sports bike riders wear the helmet most, and cruiser rider wear the helmet least. That was the result in the 2002, and in terms of the ranking, it stays the same in the 2010. However, as you can see that actually the, um, the use of um, helmet for the cruiser has been improved from 20.6% to the 45.1%. And observe the DOT approved the helmet used by the county shows some difference depends on the county and also um, depends on the um, depends dep depends on the uh, time of the years actually. And as you can see, the one county, the Dade County, um, used to be the 79.1%. But after the uh, year 2000, the, based on the 2002 survey, it was a 51%, and right now it's a 55%. However, you need to note that the, this 79% include the use of the novelty helmet. So we have conducted a uh, simple analysis just looking at the observed helmet use versus the percentage of the fatal motorcycle crash to all motorcycle crashes at the county level. So basically this shows um, this county that observed helmet use uh, is about uh, um, 48 percent and that shows the 70 percent of their uh, the, the percentage of the fatal motorcycle crashes is about the 7%. It's pretty high. And versus the, this county, and based on the, our observation, that shows 80% um, of, more than 80% of helmet use, and their per, uh, percentage of the fatal, their percentage of fatal motorcycle crash it, to all motorcycle crash is or, around the 3%. And of course, there are many other factors affecting the, this type of the crashes or the um, proportion of the crashes, but this is a very um, a high level calculation, however, that it shows some kind of relationships. And another thing is, Florida motorcycle crash data has injury severity information, the scale of the one to five. One is a no injury and five is a fatal injury. And we found the average injury severity over the old uh, motorcycle crash uh, in Florida over the years has been decreased. So year 2002, so each crash, as I said, each crash will be scored uh, of, not scored, I mean, it, each crash will be assigned a number based on the injury severity and between the one to five. So we actually, um, Calculate the old, we actually uh, calculate the average of the old crashes in, uh, old motorcycle crash in Florida. And the year 2002 was 3.5 and the year 2009 was 2.8. So you can see the numbers are reduced. And actually the use of the safety helmet uh, based on the crash data is the, in the 2002 was 45%. That means that when you look at the crash data, there is also, um, uh, 
the you, there is also a um, category that you can check whether the the person involved in the crash was using the safety helmet or not. So based on the 2002 data, there were 45% of motorcycle riders were wearing helmet when they got involved in the crash. And the, in the year 2009, that shows 62% of motorcycle riders wearing the helmet. So this was this one is has a um, continuous down continues to uh, decrease, and this one is continues to increase. So if you check the correlation between the two variables, is about um, the Pearson correlation is minus 0 0.8, and then p value being very uh, low, the 0 0.01. So this means that the increased use of the helmet is correlated to the reduced average injury severity in the motorcycle crash. So again, that you need to remember that uh, motorcycle, the use of the motorcycle helmet would not reduce. Um, uh, let me take it back. Like a use of the motorcycle helmet may not reduce the chance of getting involved in the crash. However, that this data shows that once you get involved in the crash. And certainly, the motorcycle helmet can help to reduce the your level of uh, injury. The, another interesting figure: this is a motorcycle um, crash trend by the rider age in Florida, and there is an increased appearance of the older riders in the motorcycle crash data between the 2002 and 2008. In 2002, riders over 50 represent 19.8% um, of the total motorcycle crash population. However, the same group increased to the 26.2% by the 2008. As you can see, this uh, 50 or older, they were like a uh, ranking number four based on the age group distribution, but now they are uh, ranking number one and, and the ranking number two, and they're very close to the ranking number one. This may be related to the fact that one article that I introduced, I introduced at the beginning of the presentation that being the riding motorcycle becomes the number one hobby for the baby boomer. That doesn't necessarily mean that the, um, we don't need to concern about the young riders. And young riders still be um, consisting, like only the, um, based on the endorsement uh, information, that in term, the young riders are only less than 1% of riding population. However, they take the 6.6% of crashed population. And versus the over 50, they have 26.2% of crashed population, but actually they, are ta they represent almost 50% of indoors the rider population. And same thing, for so, so this, uh, the summation of the riders under 30, we consider to be young riders, they are taking almost 35% of crash population, the crash rider population. However, they're representing only less than, uh, only 10% of, uh, the indoors the rider population. Okay, let's take another question. So in Florida, who is required to attend a motorcycle training or safety course to obtain a motorcycle endorsement? Okay, we can go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, answer is everybody. Like as per the Florida statute, and from the uh, from the July first of the two thousand eight, that anybody looking for the motorcycle endorsement has to go through the mandatory training. And before the um, the mandatory training that we actually um, track the uh, endorsed motorcycle riders. The only chance, the only opportunity that we can actually look at the unendorsed motorcycle rider population is based on the crash data. So uh, using the crash data, you see um, in the year 2002, 
about 68.1% of endorsed motorcycle riders and then 31.9% of unendorsed motorcycle riders. It, it doesn't, it means if you see, uh, if you have the 10 crashed motorcycle riders and uh, based on the, this data and seven motorcycle rider must be, um, can be maybe endorsed and versus the three, you will see the three unendorsed motorcycle riders. And this proportion of endorsed versus unendorsed has stayed pretty much um, consistent over the years. And then we start to see the some difference from the um, 2009, and you can start to see um, the difference in the 2009 after the law become, became effective. Effective. So now we're looking at the 75 per, uh, 75% versus 25% between the endorsed and unendorsed riders. And this is another, um, the higher level comparison to look at the motorcycle fatality in Freud that shows a significant reduction in before and after new mandatory training law and there's uh, mandatory training law. And this analysis includes 15 months after and 18 months before. And there are many, uh, th th there are a couple of drawbacks under this uh, analysis. For example, like these numbers include uh, all motorcycle fatalities in Florida. So somebody who got involved in this motorcycle crash could be from other state too. So which have uh, irrelevant to the uh, our mandatory training law. However, uh, if you just look at the um, high level comparison between the before and after the um, motorcycle mandatory training law, and still we can see the difference between the, these numbers, this is before the training law, and this is after the training law. And just a simple um, statistical comparison, and say the um, total number of crash between the two set of the data, there is a no statistical difference between the motorcycle crashes before and after, and there is a no uh, statistical difference between the motorcycle injury before and after. However, um, I mean, the, for the, so this was our hypothesis, and then when we do the testing, this is a result. So we reject um, our hypothesis, which means that, that there's no significant difference for the both the total number of crashes and the injury crashes. However, we can see um, for the fatal crashes, um, we assume that <clears throat> our hypothesis was there is no statistical difference between the motorcycle uh, fatal crashes uh, before and after. And based on the, our testing results, we show that we fail to reject our null hypothesis, which means and there is a significant difference before and after. So in other words, um, that the number of the motorcycle fatality based on this um, Freud state data they show the difference before and after the mandatory training law. And also, uh, we were able to obtain the, um, some data for the uh, motorcycle riders, individuals, like who actually obtained the motorcycle endorsement before the training law without training, versus also we obtained um, the motorcycle rider inform the endorsement information after the training law. So we compare the this group. So we investigated this group. Um, the A means like January to June and the the B means the July to the December. So we checked the group that got endorsed in the 2006 uh, A and they are not trained and number of industry riders is 525, and then we checked their behavior within one year from the, their endorsement. And we found, and then we checked the, their um, crash information, we found about 1.7% of the riders got involved in crash within one year. And if you look at this one, 2007A, the same thing, they uh, have no train, and we have the sample of 1,246, and 45 riders got involved in the crash in within one year, which is a 3.6% of the data. 
and we compared these numbers with the 2008B data, which is after the mandatory train row, and the number of indoors, the number of indoors rider is uh, <coughs> 23,290, and we found 331 motorcycle riders got involved in crash, which is 1.4% of uh, the entire data. And we were able to um, figure out who this data is at the ha uh, help of the Morton at the DHSMB. And this data set, this shows uh, basically, we actually do the test to figure out whether um, this means something. And according to the analysis with the selected sample, the newly induced rider after the mandatory training rule became effective has a smaller crash rate within one year from the endorsement compared to the uh, rider who obtained uh, their endorsement to be for the law without training. And but this actually um, shows the um, but the there is some limitation of the data set. So because we only have one set of the after data. So we are um, currently continue to collect the data and then we hope that we can expand this study to um, this um, the, in, um, in the, our ongoing um, project. And the other thing is we also check the citation for writing, the citation for the riders. And as you can see, the unload speed is the number one reason for the motorcycle citation in Florida. And in general, the number of the motorcycle citation has been reduced after year 2008. However, again, the, this requires the additional um, control because in the 2009 reduction, we don't know how we cannot directly link this information to the mandatory training because the actually um, there are many other regions that with the smaller um, number of citation. It, can, it could be the agency that issued the uh, traffic citation, or it could be the um, rest VMT uh, by the motorcycle riders. And we also had a chance to investigate the rider response. And our recent event survey shows that 94% of riders are actually supporting the mandatory training law. This one and this one. So 61% strongly support and 33% um, as support. Regarding the universal hammer law, the position on the reinstatement of universal hammer law in Florida. And interestingly, 60% of motorcycle riders supported the reinstatement of universal hammer law in Florida. And you can see 15% um, of motorcycle riders strongly opposed to the um, universal hammer law reinstatement in Florida. So um, up to now, uh, I, I have presented um, some of the recent safety, um, some of the trend, some of the findings from the Florida motorcycle crash trend analysis, and also the result of the observational survey, and also related with the mandatory training. And recently, the, there have been a rigorous effort by the. Um, the FDUT uh, woodcutter and the Florida safe, safety correlation to improve the motorcycle safety in Florida. And as you can see, um, several statewide campaigns were launched, and also the MSSP, the Motorcycle Strategic Safety Plan, was developed. And also the Florida uh, Motorcycle Safety Correlation uh, was formed. And also, we um, the, also that there was the one website was launched the ridesmartfloyda.com so www.ridesmartfloyda.com which is a complete resource for the um, motorcycle riders trainers sponsors and local government law enforcement agency and service uh, emergency service for everyone who is interested in improving the motorcycle safety throughout the Florida. 
And the year 2009, I've been showing the old crash record up to the 2008. So this is the 2009 data, the primary result of the 2000 Florida crash from the latest traffic crash statistics report shows 24.4% reduction in the motorcycle rated fatalities in Florida. So motorcycle fatality uh, in 2008 is 532 and it was reduced 402 in 2009. And we certainly like to see the um, continuous decrease on the on these numbers. Okay, as a conclusion that I just want to highlight is some of the um, stuff, the, some of the points that uh, I covered in this presentation. The motorcycle registration have been adopted, actually is almost tripled, uh, it's more than doubled in past 10 years in Florida. And if you go back to the slide, you can see this um, here. We had um, 1999 was a 1.2, and it was a 3.4. So if you times three times is a 3.6. So we could say it's almost uh, um, three times in the year 2000 uh, in the uh, past 10 years. And the, pro the proportion of the motorcycle fatalities compared to the all traffic fatality reached at the all-time high 17.8 percent in Florida. This number is pretty significant considering that actually the, in terms of the uh, vehicle regist registration, the motorcycle is uh, around 5% or less in Florida. And the, the use of the helmet is not required for the riders in Florida as of the now. And our initial study confirmed that the positive effect of the mandatory training law for the further analysis will be recommended. And recent motorcycle safety promotion efforts started to produce the positive results for the state of Florida. And finally, I'd like to say that we, the Cutter FDUT Motorcycle Safety Coalition, take the motorcycle, the motorcycle safety seriously and are making a joint effort to improve the motorcycle safety in Florida. And this is my contact information. I think I have more than enough time to answer questions. Uh, okay, uh, this is the, uh, uh, you can uh, ask a question, I'll follow the instruction uh, as shown on this slide. And as uh, uh, Dr. Lee mentioned, uh, I think uh, uh, this presentation is a contribution uh, of lot of our uh, partners, and I think we would like to thank uh, FDOT and uh, Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and also Florida Department of Health, and uh, also, uh, of course, Florida Motors uh, Cycle Safety Collegians. So uh, if you got any question, uh, uh, please submit your questions. And uh, Dr. Lee, I do have some question for you. Okay. Okay, uh, the first question uh, is, is there any uh, other states in the U.S. that has mandatory training law for motorcycle endorsement? Yeah, yes, there are several states, like the state of the Texas and state of California. They also have mandatory training law, like uh, Florida. Okay. Okay, uh, I also got another question for you. Uh, in your presentation, uh, you mentioned that the use of helmet is highly associated associated with the motorcycle type. So is there any uh, particular reason for that? I think that's a very interesting question. Um, we've been looking at the, this information, and I think it's just based on their personal preference. And if you're looking at the sports bike, and when you wear the helmet, that uh, in terms of looking, it seems uh, even better sometimes. And But uh, you, is people kind of hard to imagine that the Harley riders would harm it. So I think it's just personal preference, but I don't have any other um, good reason to explain that mm -hmm. why um, people are, why riders are just using, why riders are, I mean, why particular bike riders are wearing the helmet and not wearing the helmet. Okay. 
Yeah, I would like to uh, thank you for your uh, informative presentation. And uh, uh, also, uh, I'd like to say that, that this presentation can be downloaded um, in the section, the up right corner, with the icon that looks like a three pages. So I think um, the, if you look at, um, I don't think I will show the, um, the this arrow will be disappeared. But if you going um, right top of the this point, then you will click the button to download the um, PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Yeah, if uh, it looks like here we have a, a couple more questions um, from. Did your studies show who was at fault in these crashes, and was there any per associated percentages? Oh, actually, that's a um, good question. Actually, we are working on the, that subject right now. Um, we are looking at the we are um, because uh, oftentimes it's very difficult to look at the just crash data um, to see who is the uh, um, effort driver or rider. And so we've been downloading the actual crash report and then trying to see that what's the cause of the motorcycle crash and uh, who will be uh, the, in the rear fault. Because sometimes that you wear the helmet and you do the uh, whatever you need to do in a perfect condition, and then all of a sudden that you have the rear end crash, the semi coming after you, that you get crashed. So uh, I hope that we can finish the study and we can come up with uh, better findings by the, um, the uh, end of like this um, project, which will be the um, September of 2011. Okay, great. Um, looks like we have another question here. Is there a difference in the faults in motorcycle accidents before and after the required rider training? For example, is the motorcycle rider or vehicle driver more at fault? Yeah, again, I think this is the same question that um, at the um, we are able to obtain the data set for the somebody endorsed for with the training and without training. So we only look at the total numbers. So I think in the this uh, grand cycle and the, our project will go back to look at the, those information. And hopefully, as I said, that we can have um, some findings that we can share with everybody by the end of um, the September of 2011. Okay, great. Um, how was the motorcycle severity scaling system developed? Uh, Dr. Lee, I enjoyed your excellent presentation. would like to know how I can obtain access to the information you presented to keep available for my use. I mean, as I said, the presentation can be downloaded the upper corner of the screen. Um, and the, this motorcycle severity scaling system is not just particular for a motorcycle. It's just for the general um, crash in the fr state of Florida. So any, cra the, any um, motor vehicle crash in Florida will be reported at the scale of the five. And I, on the top of my head, I don't have um, the information that how they developed that scale, but that scale is, again means that one is a property damage only, and then five is a, um, the fatal crashes, and four is an incapacitating injury. Okay, looks like we have one more question here. Is there any data that shows where the use or lack of use of the helmet was the cause of the fatality? I think NISA just issued the, uh, one of the um, reports saying that the, um, the use of helmet actually helped to reduce the severity of the injury. However, I don't see, uh, I'm not 100% sure that they, they were able to uh, directly link that information between the use of helmet and the um, the, the, for the individual case, like for example, the, um, Mr. John Doe wasn't wearing the helmet, but with the helmet he could survive. So I don't know at this moment for uh, their particular relationships. Okay, I believe that's all the questions. Before I hand it over to you to conclude, uh, Dr. Lee, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you look at the top right-hand corner, um, there's an icon there for handouts. Uh, you can click that. It looks like three pieces of paper, and you can download a um, copy of today's presentation. Okay, thank you.
Okay. Uh, it's time. Uh, it's time for us to uh, get some feedback from you. And so we, uh, for every uh, webcast, we will have a. a